praise the Lord from Pastor Strader at Lighthouse Church. Thanks for connecting with us through our podcast. Our prayer is that it's a blessing to you as we try to reach, equip, and mobilize Jesus' name disciples in Apache Junction, Arizona, and the surrounding region. Enjoy today's podcast and come back often. God bless you. We love you. Upon Apache Junction in the East Valley. Uh, Now, Lord, uh, we are asking in the Spirit uh, that you would reveal to us uh, and give us eyes uh, and ears uh, of understanding in the name of the Lord. Uh, Jesus, Lord, we ask all of this. In the power and the glorious name of Jesus Christ. And the church says amen. You may be seated for a few moments tonight in the house of the Lord. I'll take you tonight, or the Holy Ghost takes us back tonight, uh, to the book of Matthew chapter number 27, verse number 46 through 53. Jesus, who has walked upon the face of the earth, has God manifest in flesh, Emmanuel, God with us, uh, who has trained and groomed his disciples and called them and had done miracles, signs, and wonders, we find in the name of Jesus that he is now crucified upon the cross. Let us settle the issue today with spiritual understanding that he was not crucified by the will of men, but he was crucified by the will of God. Can we say amen? In other words, it was not uh, that somebody just grabbed a hold of him, uh, threw him on a cross, uh, and nailed nails in his hands or his feet. Uh, But by the will of God, the Lamb of God, which was slain before the foundation of the world, uh, understood that even though uh, he was robed uh, in majesty and glory, he was God Almighty. Uh, and is God Almighty. Uh, It was the flesh of God, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, that was willingly nailed to the cross. Can we say amen? Amen. So we find in the word of God, Jesus, uh, I want you to allow the Holy Ghost uh, to transport you for a moment uh, back nearly 2,000 years ago uh, and imagine that you are standing uh, on the hill called Golgotha that is interpreted the place of the skull uh, and there you are. You have seen him do miracles. Uh, You have seen him. Uh, You ate the fish and you ate the bread. Uh, You watched him uh, from a distance speak to a tomb and command Lazarus uh, to come forth Uh, and he indeed came forth. Uh, You saw him say to the woman uh, with the issue of blood, thy faith uh, hath made thee whole. You heard him challenge uh, the crowd and say, uh, who touched me? Uh, And to, amen, the fundamental whatever, uh, or the mind, uh, amen, the, 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 uh, I don't know exactly the English word here, but to the surprise uh, of the disciples, they said, look around you, Jesus. Uh, Look around you, the throng throngs you. Uh, You have seen the miracles. Uh, You've seen him do amazing uh, wonders. Can we say amen? I hope in your mind and in your spirit you're standing before a cross uh, and you see Jesus. Uh, There's a crown of thorns that is upon his head. Uh, He's bruised and he's bloody. Uh, His skin is torn uh, and his flesh uh, is ravaged uh, by the nails uh, and the cruelty of the cross. Can we say amen? Let us get rid of the image of Jesus that teaches us uh, that Jesus is some, uh, amen, uh, wimpy, if I can say that, uh, amen, unmanly image of Jesus. Uh, Come on, men, Jesus was a man's man. Can we say amen? Uh, There was no comeliness, the Bible says, uh, we should behold in him. Uh, In other words, he wasn't cute, uh, and perhaps he wasn't handsome. Uh, He was a man's man, uh, and he 
was rugged and he was strong and yet for a moment he lays down his strength and he embraces the cross. And the reality is, as we watch him uh, breathe his last breath of life, uh, we hear the words, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Uh, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Uh, and our interest peaks, uh, and it rises and it falls uh, upon every word that perhaps uh, comes out of his mouth uh, from the cross. I've said all that. Uh, that is not the crux of the message tonight. Uh, but I feel this in the Holy Ghost so strongly the Bible says that he yielded up the ghost he died he breathed his last breath of life and yet something powerful takes place in which with our finite mind or our carnal mind with the wisdom of man alone we cannot have any spiritual perception or understanding as to what it means but we read from verse 51 and behold the veil of the temple was rent in twain uh, from the top to bottom amen and, uh, and in a moment it just seems like uh, something cataclysmic has taken place uh, there has been a shift uh, in the spirit uh, and in the world amen as we know it uh, and oh uh, we would be right uh, amen to say so I feel the Holy Ghost in the house of the Lord God's about to take us to a destination uh, in the spirit. Uh, and so, amen, uh, the veil of the temple was rent uh, or torn uh, from the top to the bottom. Uh, I, uh, somebody needs to know, uh, you need to understand uh, that God uh, has given you uh, and me access, amen, uh, to a dimension uh, of the spirit uh, that we know not of. Hallelujah. When you examine, amen, I'm just going to take a moment here and give us a historical foundation according to the Word of God. When you imagine the tabernacle and the temple that was built by order of God, the Bible teaches us, amen, in the tabernacle complex, amen, that you would enter into the gate, amen. The Bible says enter into His courts with thanksgiving and praise. Come on, somebody ought to Say amen right now. You would enter into the tabernacle and the immediate response uh, or what you were greeted by uh, was the sacrifice uh, or the place of offering. Amen. Uh, Amen. Amen. It was uh, a place of confession. Uh, I need you, Jesus. Uh, I'm undone without you. Uh, I need you. Uh, Amen. Then when you got up uh, off of the altar or where you had sacrificed, upon the altar and when you move forward your destination was the holy place but when you move forward from there the next item that you were greeted with was the brazen laver which represented amen cleansing and baptism in Jesus name and the washing away of your sins can we say amen oh God is deliberate Amen, amen. I'm going to pause a moment here and say God is absolutely deliberate. Oh, Holy Ghost is moving right now. But we you are through uh, at the labor uh, of washing yourself uh, and cleansing yourself uh, then there was another part uh, of the tabernacle plan of God Uh, it was called uh, the holy place Uh, and as you entered into uh, amen the court as you parted uh, the curtain of the holy place uh, and entered into the holy place you would uh, have found uh, the table of showbread the altar of incense and the golden lampstand and that was a wonderful place to be oh for it was a place of glory it was a place of worship it was a place where we could give praise unto God but that is not where by the Bible says that God said that he would meet with man 
In other words, uh, amen, let me make it modern t- for today. Uh, God, as we preach this morning, uh, as God spoke to us, He said, I'll give you uh, the former rain uh, moderately, uh, but I'll cause to come down uh, the latter rain uh, and the former rain uh, in the first month. Uh, in other words, what God is saying through the Word of God, uh, if you will be content uh, with the peripheral power of God, if you will be content with the peripheral move of the Spirit of God, God will let you stay right where you are. Hallelujah. Can we say amen? Oh, I'm so tired of good church. Can we say amen? Uh, I know what we mean when we say that and there's nothing wrong with saying that. Amen. Nothing wrong at all with saying that because I know the context of how we say it. Uh, But oh, I wonder what would happen uh, if we came into the house of God uh, with a mind made up that said, uh, I am so tired uh, of just a few songs uh, and a few words. uh, And oh, we we feel the power of God, but it's a measurable feeling of the power of God. It's it's a measurable dimension of the Spirit of God. Oh, I wonder what would happen if we would begin to hunger for more of a move of God's Spirit. I wonder what would happen if we fell in love with Jesus so much that we said, I'm tired of smoke. I'm tired of shadows. I'm tired of just hearing about miracles. I'm tired of someone's testimony of the glory of God. I must see more. So amen, when you entered into the holy place, the holy place was a place of worship. God loves worship. Let me tell you once again, God is extremely intentional. God is extremely intentional. This running and worship and clapping and singing and dancing, amen, uh, 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 that's, that's intentional worship for God. Can we say amen? We don't got to wait till the Spirit of the Lord moves on us to run, dance, clap, amen, uh, hallelujah. Come on, can we say amen? Well, I'm going to wait on Jesus. The Spirit's going to move me. If He's got to kick you in the seat of the pants to move you to worship, then you got a spiritual problem. Can we say amen? Well, if I feel good, I feel the Holy Ghost, then I'll dance. I wonder what you'll do when the doctor looks at you and says you got terminal cancer. If you're not feeling it, amen, you'll lose your ability to praise God in the middle of the storm. But if you're content with this place, if you're content with this dimension, God will let you stay in that dimension. But he's on the other side in the Holy holies of holies and he's asking us he's bidding us he's saying would you come through the curtain to the other side can we say amen hallelujah hallelujah we say this God God if you'll move me I'll go there the devil is a liar hallelujah hallelujah I don't need God to move me can we say amen Because there's something inside of my spirit that says, amen, uh, you can be selfish for all the wrong reasons. uh, But there's something inside of me, I don't know what you call it. It's it's coveting the good godly things or, or selfish with the power and the glory of God in a relationship with God. There's something within me that says, God, I want to see more. I want to feel you more. I want to praise you more. I want to glorify you more. God, I, I, I don't want to be on the outside. I don't want to be on the peripheral edges of the Spirit of God and what God can do. But I want to see you. I want to know you. I want to know you, Lord Jesus. I want to push beyond what I've known all my life about what church is supposed to be. And I want to push into a dimension of the Spirit where God can wake you up 
out of bed and you don't know what he's doing, but he says, get in your car and drive down to Dunkin' Donuts or wherever it is and you ain't got no craving for a donut, but he sends you because you're in the glory of the Lord. He sends you, amen, on a mission and there's somebody inside Dunkin' that needs hands laid on them. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, if you're content with the outside of the glory if you're content uh, with a drink or two uh, from the glass of the power and the glory of God, God will share his glory with no man. I hope you understand the contextualization of what is being said. Uh, And by the way, I refuse uh, to take glory off of the altar and put my name on it. Can we say amen? Amen. We're nothing but dust in the wind uh, and have an opportunity. uh, 70 years uh, is the number of men I think it is. uh, And more if God blesses us. Uh, We will die uh, if Jesus tarries on his coming. uh, And you can let our wind uh, be blown in a patchy junction wind uh, of the annals of history uh, and be blown away. Uh, But there is one name uh, that will weather your storm uh, and will outlast any situation and that is the name of Jesus but what God has spoken into my spirit so strongly amen for this service tonight is he is beckoning you as a church I, have, I feel this so strong for this house of the Lord he is beckoning you on the other side and he is saying there is a dimension wherein I live and wherein I have my being is what he is saying as it is recorded in the amen the letters to the church amen to the churches in him we live and in him we have our being and God is saying to this church you've done well you've been in the outer court and you've been you've worshipped and you've honored God with your worship and praise but God is saying it's my will that you cross the torn curtain of the veil and you come into a place where you have never been before where the holies of holies is where Jesus meets with man can we say amen 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 the Bible the Bible gives us a biblical understanding that there is an earthly holies of holies we know there's an earthly holies of holies I'm going to talk about that just a moment amen but the Bible also says that there is a heavenly holies of holies can we say amen And this is what the Bible says about the heavenly holies of holies. The earthly holies of holies. A priest would go in one time a year if they were pure of heart and pure of body and mind and spirit. And if there was no sin, God would not kill them. Amen. But if they went in with sin, God would destroy them. Amen. Yes, you're hearing correct. Amen. Amen. And so, amen, the priest would enter once. That was the earthly holy of holies where one man can see the glory of God only one time a year in amen the time of Yom Kippur amen but oh there was another man called amen the second Adam amen Jesus Christ and the Bible says but Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands That is to say, not of this building. Amen. Everybody say this building. This is the house of God. This is where we have church. This is where we worship. But God wants to take this church and he wants to loose you from the identity of the building and get you connected to the identity of what the church is supposed to be in the spirit. Shandarokoya. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
I love the building. I thank God for it. But if all we are is the church of Jesus, when we are in the building, Apache Junction, we'll never be saved according to God's will. Can we say amen? Bible says neither by the blood of goats and calves. The Bible says uh, amen, amen, but by his own blood he entered in once uh, into the holy place uh, having obtained uh, eternal redemption for us. What I literally believe is that when Jesus uh, gave up his spirit uh, or gave up the ghost, uh, it was in that moment uh, that he stepped into uh, the holies of holies uh, and the curse the veil was torn from top to bottom. Why? It was because of the entrance of the power and the glory of Jesus Christ. Not with the blood of goats or lambs that was born of some animal but by the blood of the precious blood of the Lamb of God. Jesus is carrying his own blood. He's the high priest and yet he's the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world uh, and he enters into uh, his spirit enters into uh, a position on the other side of the holy place the bible gives us a historical understanding I'm going to be brief with this. The Levitical priest would enter the holies of holies once a year on the day of atonement called Yom Kippur and would sprinkle the blood of the lamb upon the mercy seat, the Ark of the Covenant. Stay with me in the name of Jesus. If you don't stay with me, stay with the Holy Ghost. Amen. But the Bible says and history teaches us the Ark of the Covenant disappeared from the temple sometime before 586 B.C. So by the time Jesus is born and walking and shooting leather. The Ark of the Covenant does no longer exist in the holy place. Amen. Or the holies of holies. Amen. And during the time of the second temple, there was no Ark of the Covenant. There was a second temple and there will be a third temple built. Amen. Can we say amen? And the Bible and history teaches us uh, that during the time of the second temple, there was no Ark of the Covenant within the Holies of Holies. But it is said that there was a portion of rock uh, that jutted above all other rocks, three fingers uh, width high. Uh, amen. Where the Ark of the Covenant was. Uh, and the priests uh, would enter into the Holies of Holies uh, with the blood of lambs. Uh, and they would offer the blood uh, of the lambs that were sacrificed. Uh, they would sprinkle it upon the rocks uh, that were in the holy place. Uh, there was no Ark of the Covenant there anymore. It was taken away. Uh, and yet they would go there and they would sprinkle the blood of lambs. Uh, and so imagine if you would, uh, Jesus says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Uh, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Uh, and the Bible says uh, that he entered in, uh, amen, uh, amen to that temple and that tabernacle with his own blood the priest is about to pour out his own blood where the ark of the covenant was once there I'm in the hotel room studying this today and I'm literally saying my, my, my God your word is awesome what does it mean? Amen it means it don't matter honey what the world says what God establishes he always maintains hallelujah and what he has established for this church I feel the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus he is simply saying it's time for you to thank him. It's time to thank God for the past. I am not a, I'm not a young man. I'm 52 years old. I'm younger than some of y'all in the house of the Lord. But I honor our elders. I won't wag my tongue against what our elders have done in the kingdom of God and the establishing of the church. But can I tell you amen, amen. We are not going to be able to see billions of souls saved in the world as long as we are camping around the spiritual campfire of what God could do by what we know. Oh, 
Hallelujah. Can we say amen? Well, this is what we know God does, uh, so he can only do that. The devil is a liar. Can we say amen? If you, there's a hunger. God is building a hunger inside of our spirit at Lighthouse Pentecostal Church. Uh, I feel a hunger in the Holy Ghost uh, and in my spirit uh, that is saying, I thank God uh, for what God has done. Uh, but there's something inside of me uh, that says uh, it's not enough. Uh, it's not enough. Uh, it is not enough. Enough. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. It's not enough for today. It's not enough for tomorrow. We need more of the Holy Ghost. We need more of the demonstration of the glory and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we say amen? I grew up in Pentecost, and I thank God for that. At the age of five years old, I received the Holy Ghost. But there was something different about this five-year-old. I was your most naughty one on the block, perhaps. I was good in church and all of that. Fooled everybody, make them think I was sweet. Uh, amen. But there was something inside of me that was a God-planted, ordained nature. And that was, uh, amen, you can tell me what something is until your tongue falls out your mouth. But I want to experience it for myself hallelujah somebody say amen Ah, uh, you can tell me what the word says uh, and if it's written in the word uh, I'm going to believe it honey uh, you better believe it no questions asked uh, amen but there's some things uh, that we're walking around talking about giving God credit for that God was no closer to it uh, than the man in the moon uh, it's become part uh, of our Christian culture and we've locked God into uh, a dimension or a frame uh, of our Christian American culture and we've said God you can do this but I'm really not sure that you can do that I believe for this because I saw it at a camp meeting or I saw it years ago in our church but I wonder what would happen if you simply said God I'm so tired of what I've known there's another dimension in your spirit that I feel your spirit beckoning us to walk therein Lord God and I'm willing uh, to lay aside uh, my crutches. Uh, I'm willing to lay aside uh, my cane and the spirit uh, that I'm leaning on uh, what I know you can do uh, because I've seen you do it, uh, but I'm pushing toward now what I have never seen you do before. Can we say amen? I am sitting in our living room. And I know I shared this with Pastor and Sister Strader, perhaps. Amen. Because it has become the language of the kingdom for us. Amen. But I'm sitting in our living room, which, by the way, doubles as our house of prayer. Can we say amen? And I'm just going to give you a little word here. And that is this. If you don't have a place of prayer in your home, amen, don't let the house of God be the only place where you pray. If you don't got a place of prayer in your house and you're wondering why devils are bombarding your kids and your grandkids and your own mind and you're saying, I don't know why I don't have any peace of mind, the devil is a liar. Build an altar of prayer in your house. Come on, can we say amen? Build a place of prayer in your house. Uh, I can pray anywhere I go. Yes, you're right. Uh, but there's something that happens uh, when you have a place uh, where you connect with God uh, and where you say, God, uh, I want you to know uh, that when I'm in this position, uh, it's a position of submission. Uh, it's a position uh, where my spirit ears are open. Every man or woman that walks in the spirit uh, has four eyes uh, and four ears you have your ears and eyes of the flesh but you also got ears and eyes in the spirit can we say amen I'm not going to allow the perverted moronic pundits of media to dictate to me who I am and who he is. My inspiration comes not from foxnews.com. 
I don't, I can't say that, amen. I was almost about to say my motto, amen. I can't say that, amen. It's not, it's not a dirty word. Can we say amen? amen. But you got you to gotta tune all of that stuff out. I'm on target in the Holy Ghost. There's a direction. I'm not just up here talking. Amen. But I, in our house, we've created a, a place of prayer. We have a 25-year-old that when he grew up in our house, he knew there was a place of prayer. It was not uncommon for him to hear mom and dad speaking in other tongues in the house. It was not uncommon. We literally walk around our home. And if you're in home with us in Bangladesh, you will hear us saying things like, God has been so good to us. You'll hear tongues in the kitchen over coffee. You'll hear tongues in the bathroom. Amen. If you're there, you'll hear tongues in the bedroom. Hallelujah. You'll hear the glory. You'll feel it. Amen. Why? Because our home is a place of prayer. We have a toy poodle. She's red and so we call her Penny. Anytime I tell her get to the place of prayer she will run to our living room and desire to jump in the recliner because she, 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 daddy don't go to sleep in that recliner. Can we say amen? Someone said I know what kind of prayer that is. The devil is a liar. All our years of owning that recliner, I slept in it once. Amen. And I think that was after this recent crusade because I was tired beyond belief. Amen. Amen. But I'm in the chair. And that little dog knows that there's a place of prayer. And if a dog knows uh, there's a place of prayer. You can fill in the rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah mean to assault anyone or to offend anyone but I want you to know you cannot have the glory of God you cannot have the power of God moving and working in your life if you are a prayerless saint well I'm hungry for God how hungry are you I want to see the power of God how much do you want to see it this is what you hear about. And if this is my folly, I don't mean it like this. But I'm going to speak as the Apostle Paul. Amen, amen. You can talk about, man, I want to see miracles like that. Uh, Brother Corbin, you lay your hands on me or do whatever. I want to see miracles like that. I understand what's being asked for. But what you really need to understand uh, is before there's miracles, there has to be a cross. Uh, before there is miracles, uh, there's daily consecration. There's weeks of fasting and prayer. Amen. There's times where God will say uh, at the drop of a moment, uh, he will say, you are going on a three-day fast. Uh, you are going on a seven-day fast. Uh, amen. And unless uh, you are willing uh, to say with your actions uh, how hungry you really are, then God uh, will allow you to see his glory and feel his glory. And you will make it to heaven, but you will never enter the holies of holies. See, because the holies of holies isn't, isn't where you get the Holy Ghost. No, 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 no. And anyone that would tell you that when you got the Holy Ghost, you got everything that you were ever going to get from God, they're lying to you. Can I say that again? Anybody that ever tells you that the moment you spoke in tongues for the first time at the altar, you got all that God was ever going to give you, they are lying to you. Yeah, you got the earnest of your inheritance. You got the Holy Ghost. And when you were baptized in Jesus' name, your name was written in the Lamb's book of life. You're going to hear the trump of God sound. And he's coming back for you. And he's coming back for me. But there's something that takes place in the body of Christ when we say, I thank God for salvation, but I kind of feel there's more. I thank God for good church, but I kind of feel that there's something more. And I'm sitting in my altar room, 
And there's not a wooden altar there. There's couches sitting in the room of prayer. And the Lord speaks to me. And he says, how many do you believe that I could save in this nation? Before I could even intellectualize it, intellectualize it, out of my mouth rolls one million souls. And the Lord says, it's done. Oh, you didn't feel that. Amen. I said, God, one million souls. He says, it's done. What God, do you realize what God was saying? He's saying, I'm giving a blank check to my kingdom. He didn't say, this is what I'm going to do. But he asked the question, which is very much like what God does. He says, what do you believe that I can do? What do you expect me to do? What are you hungry for me to do? What do you want to see me do? And instead of saying, instead of praying a vague, naive prayer and response and say, Oh God, all I want is whatever your will is. God already knows if you're submitted to his will. But he wants to know, what is your brain saying? Because he will not bypass your flesh. And so he's wanting a response to come out of your mouth. I want you to hear the word of the Lord today. We're on a journey right now. He's wanting to hear you say, I believe in a 1,000 soul revival in Apache Junction. I just believe it's going to happen. I believe that out of this church we will plant churches. I believe, Lord Jesus, that out of this church will come a powerful, anointed, effective body of preachers and ministers that shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover and will preach the word of the Lord and souls will be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. Can we say amen? You may be seated just a few more moments. I'm sitting there. And Sister McKenzie, amen, this is our niece in the Holy Ghost, amen. Hallelujah. You better be good to her. Hallelujah. I said that live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm sure he is. Amen. Hallelujah. But I, I literally, McKenzie, I, I, I literally, I, I, I'm like, God, what did you just say? He said, it's done. And so when you pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's looking for an earthly connection to his spirit will in heaven. Amen. And so I, I, I did not know, Pastor, how to handle that. And all I knew to do was what I had done before the veil. And that was just worship. And there was nothing wrong with that. Because anytime God gives a promise, a response should be worship. Can we say amen? I literally stood uh, up from my couch and I began to dance uh, and I began to worship God uh, in my living room. Uh, got a hold of my wife, uh, said this is what the Lord said. Uh, began to talk to the church uh, and I'm sure that they thought uh, you are off uh, your rocker. You have lost uh, your ever loving mind. Uh, you have finally cracked Corbin. Uh, you're over the hill. You're gone. You're your nuts, your bonkers. It's over for you. Because how do you get from 30,000 to 1 million? Anything that God tells you, if it's attainable by your own hands, it doesn't belong to God. Amen, amen. In other words, if you can make it happen, honey, go ahead. For the glory of God. 
But what I'm talking about and what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to us about tonight is a dimension where man has, has almost, man, man's hands are, are not the first subject that God wants to know about. What he wants to know is, do you just believe? Amen. Will you believe that I can do what I said that I can do? And so, amen, I, 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 I went to church talking about a one million soul revival. They thought I was nuts. Nobody had the courage to say it. Amen. But I could see it in their eyes, you know, that kind of black-eyed look, uh, steely look that says, you know, you've lost it. It's finally gotten to you. Amen. And so, but I just kept plugging and I kept saying, God's going to give the nation of Bangladesh a one million soul revival. Hallelujah. And then I begin to hear them say, we are believing God uh, for a one million soul revival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then uh, in the last 62 days uh, that I gave you this morning, uh, we've seen over 17,500 filled with the Holy Ghost. Thousands of miracles. That ain't this side stuff. That's that side stuff. That ain't, that ain't what I know God can do. It's what I don't know that he can do because I've seen him do it before but I'm just bold enough to believe that he'll do whatever he says can we say amen can we say amen hallelujah I don't know how you can say this but I'll, I'll just say it in that prayer room where God gave promises of a one million soul revival. By the way, we will see that one million soul revival take place. We are already transitioning from one million to two. In our spirit. See, you got to learn to talk the language of the kingdom. You can't say, well, I'm believing. You know, I, I think God's going to do this. you got to boldly begin to say, God will heal my body. God's going to heal your body. We are going to see a thousand soul revival. Put it on coffee mugs, mugs, banners, every, anything you can put it on. A thousand, whatever God speaks into your spirit. Start putting it everywhere. Amen, amen. And, and so in that prayer room walks a woman. Tragedy brings her there. But she's walking into our prayer room. She don't know where she is. She don't know where she's sitting, but she's sitting on the altar. It's a couch that's fluffy and cushy. Amen. She's sitting on the altar. Her name is Rima Khan. Rima Khan was diagnosed with kidney cancer and according to the doctors was destined to die of kidney cancer. Rima Khan walks into our house. So we sit her down in the prayer room. Amen. Where, amen, where we pray. Amen. She said, I, and she's from a Muslim background. Amen. But that doesn't matter. God heals Muslims just like he does believers. Hallelujah. Don't get tight on God right now here. Amen. 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 You start talking about Muslims, people start to think of Osama bin Laden and terrorists and all of this. Let me tell you, Muslims make the best apostolics. Come on, can we say amen? Amen, amen. We are seeing a revival amongst the Islamic faith in Bangladesh. I have no qualms in saying that, that there were many that used to pray toward Mecca five times a day in the name of Allah. And don't you ever say Allah is Jesus. They are not the same God. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, Emmanuel, God in flesh, and Allah is Baal. Amen, amen, amen. The etymology of the word Allah comes from two words, which means Baal Allah or Baal Ilah, which means Baal who is the Lord. So we have seen it happen. There, amen. So I'm, I'm not going to waste your time, but amen. Rima came into the prayer room and she sat down on the sofa 
And uh, it's the altar, really. She sits down there and she says, James and Liz, I don't know what it is in this place, but I feel something that I've never felt before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We didn't tell her, we ambushed you and you're in the altar. Amen. Amen. No, we didn't have to tell her that. We just let the Holy Ghost flood that body. Amen. Amen. We began to pray for Rima Khan. And it wasn't long. Rima Khan kept coming. She came to Bible study too, I think, a time or two. And she'd come and she'd drink coffee and tea and eat cookies or whatever. Amen. And all the while she's sitting in the altar getting another dose of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Where God's touching her body and God delivered her of kidney cancer. She is healed today because of the power of the name of Jesus and a place of prayer where God would say, how many do you believe that I could save in this nation? Can we say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Oh, for the glory of God. I don't, it's not our business to figure out God's business. When God speaks, we need to arise to that moment and say, I believe. I believe there's nothing impossible for you. I'm going to share this with you just for a moment. Amen. We were 22 years old. I was 22 years old. God took us to Bangladesh. I, I grew up in a church that apostolic was what we were and what we are. Can we say amen? amen. Please understand what I mean by apostolic. I mean miracle signs and wonders. Amen. Outpouring of the Holy Ghost. The gifts of the Spirit in operation. Can we say amen? Amen. So we need to speak the language of the kingdom and not be schizophrenic with apostolic verbiage. Can we say amen? We're afraid to say I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus because our flesh gets real up in the way because we start thinking, what if he doesn't? Why don't you just obey the Holy Ghost and let God take care of God's own business? I am not worried about is God going to do that. For the Bible says your word, O oh God, is forever settled in heaven. And so when he speaks a word. Now if I'm, I'm walking willy-nilly, amen, if I can say that. And I'm not praying and I'm not living right and fasting and in the word of God. And I get an unction of James Corbin's flesh. Uh, that's going to fail. Amen. But oh, when God says something, I don't got to figure it all out. All I need to do is say that's the next dimension. That's where God wants to take us. Amen. You want to be here Monday and Tuesday. Because what pastor said was what God spoke into my spirit. And I've been praying, God, don't let us teach on the gifts of the Spirit without a demonstration of every one of them. And I stood here in, or stood here in worship and was praying in my spirit saying, And God, let not the demonstrations come from me. Because you need to understand that God wants to use you in the gifts. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Say amen. And so, amen. I was 22 years old. Amen. Grew up in an apostolic church in California. Went on the mission field. Didn't know everything I needed to know. But I had a hunger. I had that whole James Corbin nature that I spoke about earlier that said, God, I am tired of hearing about it from my elders. I honor them. I don't know that you'll find anyone that honors our elders more than I do. I love them. I thank God for them. Can we say amen? amen? We're on their shoulders. Can we say amen? amen? They paved the way. They labored in the trenches so that we can see the glory of God manifest in this dimension. But there's something in me that says, I don't want to hear about what God did, but I want to, I want to know what God is doing. Can we say amen? amen. I'm not going to discredit them. But at 22 years old, God took us to Bangladesh. Didn't know everything I needed to know. But there was a deep hunger inside of me that said, God, I want to see more. I want to see more of your glory and of your power. I'm hungry for more. 
Not that flesh would be a receptacle to receive glory and consume it upon my own lust. But that I would give glory back to God. As I'm sitting in this village where God took us to, I heard the screams of a woman. I've shared this with Sister McKenzie and the, those, the churches in the, on the west, uh, uh, western area of uh, uh, Arizona, Havasu and Kingman and so on. So y'all have heard this, but act like you haven't. Can we say amen? But I'm sitting there in this village and I hear the screams of a woman. And it's not normal. Something bad is wrong. I jumped to my feet and went running to where the screams were coming from. And to my dismay, I'm watching someone carry the corpse of a two-month-old son of this woman. She had left her beautiful baby boy at home. And she had gone to the marketplace. I don't know how long she was gone, Pastor Schrader. But by the time she made it home, her beautiful baby boy was now ashen gray. And his body was already cold. There was no pulse. He was dead. She came and she saw this and she began to throw herself against the walls of her bamboo hut. And at that moment, and I feel the Holy Ghost right now, hallelujah, at that moment they carried the body of this baby boy on that little dirt brick path, amen, that was only maybe four feet wide. And I'm running toward that scene, amen, and I'm seeing it as I'm running. And I literally begin to pray in my mind. And I begin to say, God, I don't know if I have enough faith. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me in that moment and said, It's not how much faith you have. I just need to know today, do you believe that I'm going to resurrect him today? And I simply said, yes. Amen. We laid hands uh, on that corpse. Uh, it was the weirdest uh, sensation I have ever experienced in my life. Uh, you're touching a dead body. Uh, amen. But we begin to pray. Uh, and I, I remember saying something like this. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a King James Version prayer. I know I say that a lot. Uh, it wasn't a, oh God, if thou seest fit prayer. Amen. You need to pray. Uh, in faith and begin to proclaim God it's not your will that he dies and so in the name I remember saying God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I command life to come back into this body and when Jesus rolled off my tongue something began to happen in that corpse he came back to life God resurrected him from the dead He's 25, 26 years old today. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. You may be seated just a few more moments. Hallelujah. And so I was thinking about it tonight in worship. I was thinking about it. I understand. I understand uh, faithless pushback, uh, but you've come too late, honey, to tell me that God doesn't heal. You're talking to the wrong cowboy saying that God don't heal. Hallelujah. I've seen way too many blinded eyes open and crippled lame people walk without a limp. We've seen them coming pushed in a wheelchair and leave pushing their own wheelchair home. Hallelujah. We've seen them with their canes up in the air shouting I am healed. We've seen tumors fall off of people's bodies. The size of golf balls hallelujah we've seen blinded eyes when I say we I'm not speaking about the Corbins I'm speaking about the kingdom of God in Bangladesh amen because that's what we are the kingdom of God and we refuse to glory in the presence and the glory of Jesus in the flesh can we say amen hallelujah Hallelujah. So what are you saying? 
I can, I can talk about miracle after miracle after miracle. Times where if it wasn't for my wife screaming the name of Jesus, we would have entered into eternity. Amen. I cannot explain this except I can tell you we were on a 15 foot high dike that was a road. Amen. And Bangladesh traffic, you have seen it. Amen. Hallelujah. If you can drive in Bangladesh, you can drive anywhere. Amen. And I do it. Amen. But we're driving on. I'm, I'm doing about 70 miles an hour on top of this dike that has an asphalt paved road. There's a large bus in front of us and another bus overtaking that bus and a huge truck coming the other way. And we're going about 70 miles an hour. There is nowhere to turn. Amen. If I turn to the left or to the right, we would die. Hallelujah. We would fall 15 feet down and there were trees along the road our lives would have been taken in that accident but my wife begins to scream the name of Jesus I cannot explain it but God got us through to the other side oh I, I, come on now hallelujah I, I didn't just swerve I didn't just make something happen with the slide of my hand but there's a glory dimension of the spirit of God where God will say honey don't you worry baby I got you in the middle of this trial I got you in the middle of this diagnosis I'll carry you all the way through can we stand in the name of the Lord hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. There have been times where I have literally prayed and I have said, God, knowing that the hostile crowd was there, I have literally said, I'm going to walk in the middle of these people, Lord, and I want you to make me invisible. And I would walk through the middle of them and they would part like the Red Sea in Moses' day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One time was in a police station. Amen. Amen. And they were holding me there. I wasn't under arrest. Amen. But they were holding me there. Why? Because there was an angry mob outside uh, that perhaps uh, wanted to kill us uh, because we were baptizing people in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we say amen? amen. Oh, you heard the, the sweet part. Uh, miracle signs and wonders and victory reports, but oh, there's a cross and there's a price. I'm in the police station and what I didn't know but I found out later is they were holding me in the police station because if they let me go in the middle of that angry mob they thought they would perhaps take my life. And so I walk into the middle of this mob to get papers out of the car and I'm literally saying God make me invisible. Walk into the middle of them they part. And God, God helps us. But I'm in the police station. Cameras are in my face. Uh, they're from all kinds of networks from around the world. This is one of those God dimensional things. Amen. See, sometimes what we feel is an attack from hell might be a setup from heaven. You might be rebuking some stuff that might be the hand of God. Hello? Can we say Amen. You'll understand why. They were live feeding all the way from Pakistan to Australia. And they had videos, cameras in my face, live on television. I, I didn't see it. People told us about it. Amen. And they were saying, why were you baptizing people? And I thought, if the devil's going to be dumb enough to ask that question on live TV, we might as well share the gospel. I know that sounds cocky and sounds prideful. I don't mean it in that way. Amen. But you've got to flip the script in the name of Jesus. And so I begin to explain Jesus' name baptism. It was preached basically from Afghanistan and Pakistan all the way to Australia. The importance of baptism in the name of Jesus. 
But as I was being held, the angry mob was coming in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the police station. They were holding me there. I wasn't under arrest. They were trying to save me. Amen. But there was a man or an angel that was sitting beside me the whole time. And he would literally say to me every few minutes, he would say, Mr. Corbin, I'm here to tell you that everything is going to be all right. And I'm looking at him thinking, I don't know you from Adam. Who in the world are you? And about 10, 15 minutes later, he would say, Mr. Corbin, I'm here to tell you that everything is going to be all right. Can we say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Everything was all right. Because at about 11 o'clock at night, into the police station walks, a young man, he's handsome looking, he's well dressed, he hugs me, amen, gives me the traditional greeting, and sits down at his desk, he's the one in authority, sits down at his desk, or whatever desk it was, and for the next 30 minutes, uh, we talked about uh, the power and the glory of the name of Jesus Christ. Can we say Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Another time we pulled up into an intersection that was a well-known intersection of ours. There was a movement, this was many years ago, for Islamic uh, fundamentalists to take back the country. And so they were killing judges. They were putting bombs on buses and and, uh, killing judges. And uh, this is real missions, folks. Can we say amen? This is real missions. Can we say amen? Bombs. They were they were killing judges left and right, and we pull up into this intersection, and all of a sudden, a loud explosion took place just behind our car. You could hear debris landing on top of the vehicle. My wife throws our son down in the floorboard of the car. He was a little guy at that time, and she begins to shout Jesus or whatever. And drivers are bailing out of their cars. They're leaving them in the intersections and running. I gunned it and God got us through. And when we got through that, our son said, while I was on the floorboard of the car, I was looking back. He could see the smoke. He could hear, we could hear the debris landing on top of the Jeep. Amen. But he said, I saw an angel of the Lord in the middle of all of that. Somebody say amen. We literally prayed and I said, God, I want angels on the four corners of our home. I want angels of the Holy Ghost, angels of the Lord in at, at every entrance of this home. I want angels in his room, in our room. I want them in the kitchen, the bathroom. I want them everywhere. Amen. Uh, amen. There, a, there is an understanding in the spirit world uh, that there's not a devil from hell that can cross a Holy Ghost line that has been established. I wonder if you'd go home and do that, what would happen? My mama was about to die. She had fallen and the, they said if they didn't get her off the ground, she would have died where she laid. But all of a sudden I saw brilliant light shoot through the house. I saw this. My son began to scream. And it was a ball of light, a brilliant light. And I, I, you know, angels don't always show up with wings. Can we say amen? But he screamed, Dad, did you see that? I said, I saw it, amen. Amen, it was the same time that Mama was laying on the floor and medics were working on her, trying to revive her and to help her to survive, amen. Uh, it, what, 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 what was that? Uh, that was a dimension of the spirit uh, where you don't just go, amen. Uh, you can't get there uh, just because you spoke in tongues uh, at an altar once. Uh, but when you pray uh, and when you say, God, uh, You've torn the veil from top to bottom. You've given us access to enter into a dimension that is not our own, but is a God dimension. That's when you'll begin to see an apostolic move of God's Spirit. Can we say amen? I want to know tonight, I belabor the point I know intentionally, There's so much more. I will say this to you, what I have already said. I know in the Holy Ghost that the Spirit of the Lord is standing before this body of believers. 
He will not take you to a place that you are not willing to go. But He is standing before you and He is bidding you to come to a new dimension. He's asking you to let go of the railings of what you know. And He is calling you to another dimension of the Spirit. A dimension where the dead are raised, not in Bangladesh, but Apache Junction. A dimension where the crippled walk, not in Bangladesh, but in Apache Junction. A dimension where there are crusades that take place, not in Bangladesh, but in Apache Junction. I believe that God could turn your picnic into a Holy Ghost outpouring. You could grill your best burger, but the Holy Ghost could show up in the name of Jesus. But God will never take you there if you're not willing to go. And the only way that you can go to that dimension is you have to let go of this dimension. I want you to hear the Holy Ghost right now. You have to let go of the dimension that you know. Not the doctrine. Not holiness. Not the doctrine of the Word of God. But that dimension that says, if we'll just show up on Wednesday night, Sunday morning, and Sunday night, we will be the church. But a dimension that says, everywhere I go, I am praying for the glory of God. We are standing in line to a famous fish restaurant in Little Rock, Oklahoma. Hear this. This is the word will of God. It's on Bill Clinton Avenue. Don't hold that against me. Can we say amen? It was famous. They talked about the fried fish and catfish and hutch puppies. And man alive, I wasn't born in Mississippi, but that sounds good. We're standing on the sidewalk and there's a line behind us and there's two dear sisters standing beside us or behind us. We don't know them. But one of them looks at my wife and there are others with us and she says, you, you, you have something. And I felt in the Holy Ghost to tell her exactly what it was. I said, sis, let me tell you what it is. It's the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost hit us on the sidewalk and the four of us were speaking in tongues on the sidewalk on Bill Clinton Way can we say amen waitresses have followed us out of restaurants because they heard that conversation can we say amen oh I feel the Holy Ghost right now you better watch your talk amen can we say amen because somebody is listening to you well, I've seen them in restaurants. I've seen them just kind of stand there. Amen. Because they're, they're hearing about the glory of God. We've seen them walk out of restaurants and follow us to the car. Amen. And we begin to pray for them and talk to them about the things of God and how God was going to change their life with a prophetic word and a word of knowledge. And you've gone through this, but that's over, honey. And God's going to move you into this. Da, 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 da. You don't have to know them. You don't have to have a relationship with them. But the glory cloud of God, that dimension of the Spirit is a dimension that, amen, cannot be measured by what you have what you know today but it's a dimension that says uh, God I believe you can do anything uh, and with that faith that you can do anything I'm expecting you to do anything I close in the name of Jesus but if you are hungry this is I'm going to say it again God will not take you where you are not willing to go he will not force your will he will not force you. But if you would say, I am hungry for the dimension of the Spirit that God's speaking to us about tonight, would you lift your hand? I love church, but I'm tired of church like normal. wonder what would happen if, if we came through the doors and we were just focused on prayer and 
the Holy Ghost hit the place and prophecy began to take place and the word of wisdom and working of miracles and, uh, and, and we didn't even have to play a note, amen, because we were so enthralled with the glory of God. Can we say amen? This is what I know. God is going to move in a powerful way in just a moment. But I feel this in the Holy Ghost. If you have never spoken in other tongues or you want the Holy Ghost tonight, would you come down to this altar right now? If there's anybody here that does not have the Holy Ghost, you've not spoken in tongues or you haven't spoken in tongues in a while and you know you need to be refilled with the Holy Ghost, nobody judging you. This is a no judgment zone. You're hungry for the Spirit of God. Come on down. Come on down. We won't, we won't tarry. Come on down. If you're sick in your body, hallelujah. Brother, I want you to come. I want you to come. Hallelujah. If would you come. Thank you. Hey, Amen. Hallelujah. I know the Lord's going to heal his body. Hallelujah. You're going to live and you're not going to die. Can I tell you, brother, that the disease that you've been diagnosed with is not a permanent resident. It's not the will of God. It's not the will of God. It's not going to take your life. And it's going to go today in the name of Jesus. I feel that so strongly in the Holy Ghost, folks. This isn't a dog and pony show. This isn't nothing like that. I have prayed, I have thought about this man, this brother throughout this, from this morning and in the hotel. And I, the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, it is a non-resident disease. It, atarosha it does not have authority to stay in your body. Am I at liberty? It does not have authority to stay in your body. In the name of Jesus. Do you believe that? I know you do. God's going to heal you today. We're going to curse those cancerous cells in the name of Jesus and command them to respond to the Word of God and the Spirit of God. And God's going to take those cancerous cells and He's going to reverse them in the name of Jesus Christ. And He's going to begin to heal them. From this day on is your journey to healing. Not because of chemotherapy. Not because of radiation. But because of the power of the name of Jesus. Those cells that are cancerous are going to respond to the voice of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Not my voice but the voice of Jesus. The Holy Ghost spoke to me in my room today and said that the cancer is a non-resident cancer. It does not have authority to live and dwell in your body. It does not have an address in your body and it must go in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. We're going to pray, amen, for our brother. And God's going to heal him. God's going to heal others of you here today. I believe that God is going to fill people with the Holy Ghost today. Uh, if you're sick in your body, come on down. Come on down. This is a dimension of the Holy Ghost. Uh, what I really feel is there is a literal line in the Spirit. I know that the house of God is the entire house of God. But there's something that takes place uh, when you move out of your seat uh, and you say, I'll go down there. Amen. Because of physical, how your body responds uh, tells the Spirit of the Lord uh, what He can do in your spirit. Can we say amen? Someone's body posture doesn't mean anything. The devil is a liar. You do this, you'll never receive the Holy Ghost. But when you unlock your spirit by your hands, lift it up, God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Can we say amen? But I believe in the Holy Ghost there is a powerful anointing of the Spirit of God that is down here in this altar. I believe it's going to sweep through the house of God. Amen. So if you can come, if you can't come, just get to the front and sit, if whatever you have to do. But get down here in the name of Jesus. We're going to pray for two things. I want you to hear this in the name of the Lord. We're going to say yes to God. Disease is not the most important right now. What's most important is that our spirit responds to a torn veil of the temple where we say, God, I believe that you can do anything and I want to see more of your glory. Can we say amen? 
So we're going to pray two things. We're going to pray, God, we believe, and we're going to walk into that place of a moving of your spirit. And then secondly, we're going to pray for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. It is already beginning to happen. I believe that the Spirit of the Lord is already moving. But we're going to pray for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And we're going to pray healing in the name of Jesus. Everybody in this house, uh, you don't got to be a member of this church to pray with us. Amen. 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 We want you to be a member. Amen. Welcome. Amen. But you don't have to be a member. Amen. Uh, you could have come from wherever this afternoon. Amen. Uh, but you can lift your hands to the Lord uh, and your voice to the Lord uh, and pray in the name of Jesus and he will shift your paradigm or what you know and he'll move you into the dimension of the Spirit. Can we do that right now in the name of Jesus? Come on, would you lift your hands to the Lord? Right now what we are praying for is God move us. Uh, God, we move to the next dimension of your spirit in the name of Jesus. Come on, you got to open your mouth. You got to open your mouth. The journey to the holies of holies entailed worship. And it was not worship just for 30 seconds. Amen. Uh, amen. There's something that needs to take place in the house. Uh, we need to worship for more than a moment. Uh, we need to pray for more than what we feel good to. Uh, God, in the name of Jesus, uh, I see in the Holy Ghost, uh, amen, that you uh, have torn the veil in two. Uh, you are standing in the holies of holies Lord Jesus and God in the name of Jesus today we make a spiritual decision to cross over to the holies of holies come on let the Holy Ghost immerse you right now come on respond in tongues in the name of Jesus speak in tongues in the name of the Lord you're walking into the spirit of God a new dimension hallelujah Hallelujah. Come on now. Let's begin to pray for the Holy Ghost. Let's begin to rebuke sickness in the name of Jesus. Come on. You ought to be laying hands on somebody right now. If you are healed, then would you begin to lay hands on somebody? This is that next dimension where God uses you. I curse cancer in the name of Jesus.